73 to 48. What's so significant about the score you might ask? Was this a really good team? Such as the Gonzaga Bulldogs beating down on an in-conference opponent such as San Diego? No. The 25 point margin of victory was the final score of the Big East Tournament Championship game. The 8th seeded Georgetown Hoyas entered the tournament with an abysmal record of 9 and 12. However, on the 49th anniversary of the late former head coach John Thompson Jr.'s hiring, the Hoyas won their first Big East tournament since 2007. How did this struggling team with no hopes of making it to the big dance decide to get hot at the last second to secure their bid? How did head coach and former Knicks star Patrick Ewing win his first ever championship at MSG when he had failed to do so twice during his professional career. Today, we will delve into how this team was able to pick themselves up and put on a performance which will hopefully carry over into March Madness. Let's flash back to 2015, the last time the Hoyas were in the NCAA tournament. After defeating Eastern Washington in the round of 64, their season ended in a 75-64 defeat to the Utah Utes. The next five seasons represented a downward trend for the team. After finishing a combined 29-36 over the next two seasons, John Thompson III was fired. He had a successful tenure with the Hoyas, leading them to eight NCAA tournament appearances over 13 seasons. However, in those last two seasons, he just wasn't getting the job done. After spending 15 seasons as an assistant coach in the NBA, Patrick Ewing was ready for a shot to be a head coach. His alma mater came calling and offered him the open position. Ewing had actually played under John Thompson Jr. from 1981 to 1985. The player and coach tandem resulted in three Big East championships, three Final Four appearances, and a national title in 1984. Thompson became the first African American head coach to win the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is one of the most widely respected coaches in the entire basketball world. When Ewing accepted the position, he was more than ready to get the Hoyas back to these glory days. However, things did not go as planned. After posting a 15 win and 15 loss season, Ewing appeared to have things under control the following season, as the 19 and 14 Hoyas qualified and eventually lost in the NIT tournament. Freshman James Akinjo and Mac McClung appeared to have the team trending in the right direction. Last season, Georgetown returned with a strong core of veteran players. The season unfortunately got off to a rocky start, but the team ultimately began its decline with the announcement that James Akinjo and starter Josh LeBlanc would no longer play for Georgetown and would actually end up transferring. While it's unclear as to why Akinjo left the team, apparently there had been restraining orders filed against LeBlanc due to sexual harassment and assault, as well as charges of an alleged burglary at an apartment. Two more starters, Galen Alexander and Myron Gardner, were dismissed from the team as well, about a week and a half later, due to the same reasons that LeBlanc was dismissed. Despite a depleted roster, the team finished 10-3 against non-conference opponents. However, once they entered conference play, the holes in the team began to show. Ewing was forced to play walk-ons, and the Hoyas finished 15-17, including losing 7 straight games to finish out the season. And, well, had there been an NCAA tournament, they most likely would not have been in it. That spring, things looked even bleaker for the Georgetown program, as Mac McClung announced his intention to enter the 2020 NBA draft. However, after consulting with NBA teams, and some miscommunication between Ewing and McClung, McClung announced his intention to transfer to Texas Tech to play more in the role of a point guard instead of the position of the shooting guard that he had been playing in while he was at Georgetown. His concerns about the future of his team may have been a key factor in his decision to leave. Many saw the 2019 season as a step backwards for the program, and fans and critics held very little expectations for the Hoyas in the foreseeable future. Heading into the season, Georgetown was viewed as the worst team in the conference. Five players had transferred during the offseason and only two starters had returned. Ewing ramped up his recruiting efforts trying to find players who possessed strong character in order to avoid any of the off-court issues that they had to deal with the previous season. As a result of public health restrictions due to COVID-19, the team played their home games on campus at McDonough Gymnasium instead of the Capital One Arena where they usually play. The team started out slow as they struggled to develop the chemistry needed to become competitive in the Big East. 
starting the season out with a record of 3-8. and eight. After losing five straight games in early January, the program, due to COVID concerns, actually shut down for three weeks. With the knowledge that he may be on his way out the door, Ewing made some crucial changes to his team, including benching starting guard Javon Blair and inserting transfer forward Tudier Bile into the lineup. Once they returned to action, they came out firing, finishing 7-9 in conference matchups, a, a major improvement from their 5-13 conference record last year. Going into the Big East tournament, Ewing's coaching record stood even at 58 wins and 58 losses. In their first matchup, the Hoyas faced off against the Marquette Golden Eagles, who were sitting at 13-13 and at that point. Georgetown wasted no time from the start, getting out to a 13-point lead early on. Defensive dominance forced the Golden Eagles to take difficult shots and help them hold onto this lead, resulting in a 68-49 victory. Advancing in the tournament meant that the 8th-seeded Hoyas were to face off against the number one seeded Villanova Wildcats in Madison Square Garden. Before the game even began, Patrick Ewing was frustrated when a security guard asked to see his credentials. This later resulted in a rant. Everybody in this building should know who the hell I am. Mainly due to the fact that his retired number is literally hanging in the rafters at MSG. From my perspective, I understand where he's coming from. A Knicks legend deserves to be recognized, especially when he's at his former home court. The Wildcats led by forward Jeremiah Robinson Earl had had a strong season defeating Arizona State and Texas in non-conference play. However, they were not without their weaknesses. Point guard Colin Gillespie had to miss the rest of the season due to a torn MCL and was unable to play in this game. After a close first half, Villanova began to pull away, leading by 11 points halfway through the second half. However, the Hoyas battled back, going on a 13-1 run and were down by just one point. Freshman Dante Harris secured the deal for the Hoyas, knocking down the two free throws to put them up by one, resulting in a final score of 72 to 71. There was no way the Hoyas could continue their success, except for the fact that they did. Led by Jamarco Pinkett, the Hoyas defeated the Seton Hall Pirates, 66 to 58, after a strong first half performance. Shockingly, they had reached the Big East Championship and thoroughly dominated the Creighton Blue Jays. They knew that they had to win in order to make the NCAA tournament and wasted no time in doing so. They entered the half up 18 points and ended up cruising to a 73-48 victory in a game that just was not close at all. One month ago, the Hoyas were 5-10. After the team was shut down, Georgetown has gone 10-4, including four straight victories, a Big East championship victory, and an NCAA tournament appearance. Ewing had been searching for this validation throughout his coaching career and has finally achieved a significant accomplishment. At least for now, the haters will be quiet, and hopefully the success and possible tournament success will allow the Hoyas to be trending in the right direction to become a perennial threat, not only in the Big East, but across the entire NCAA. If there's a team you want to pick to upset a lower seed, I'd go with the Georgetown Hoyas, as they appear to be one of the hottest teams entering the tournament. Ewing, the first person to win the Big East title as a player and as a coach, helped his team beat the odds future of the team, Ewing appears to have everything finally figured out. Freshman guard Dante Harris is a strong on-ball defender with the ability to score anywhere on the floor. Last December, five-star 2021 shooting guard Aminu Mohamed announced his commitment to play for Ewing at Georgetown. Dikembe Mutombo's son, four-star center Ryan, announced his commitment last October. With these pieces in place, Ewing should be on the right track to bring the Hoyas back to their glory days. This wraps up our video on the immaculate comeback of the Georgetown Hoyas. This story could honestly become a movie, especially if the Hoyas are able to make a run in the NCAA tournament. They overcame a lot of adversity, and the fact that Ewing was able to help guide his team when everything was falling apart goes to show how great of a coach he actually is. Let us know how we did in the comments below. Do you have any video ideas? We would love to hear them. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on another one of our great videos. Thank you.